Dodging and burning is a very important aspect of retouching and probably, if I dare to say, the most important aspect of retouching because you have the opportunity to work on your shadows and your highlights independently and boosting your shadows and highlights can add this sort of dynamic range to your image. So your images tend to look, you know, um, sharper, more detailed and it's just, it just overall takes your images from one level to the other. So today I'm going to show you how I dodge and burn my image. Now, there are different ways of dodging and burning images. Some people use 50% um, gray layers. Some people use curves adjustments. Uh, even when using 50% gray layers, it's still different. Some people use the traditional dodge and burn tools that are right here, while some people actually opt to use um, low opacity and low flow brushes. Um, and yeah, so there are just um, a ton of ways um, to, to do dodging and burning in, in Photoshop. And I have my own way. I've tried. Um, probably every way possible. I've, I've gone with the 50% gray layers. I've worked with my brushes, my white and black brushes um, at low opacity on 50% gray layers. I have also worked with the traditional dodge and burn tools that are right here. And while I've also used curves adjustments in different ways, there are different ways you can use your curves adjustments too. But today I'm going to show you the new way I found and how it works for me. And I'll also show you how to create a small, tiny check layer that'll help you um, know where to dodge and burn. And you know, it would, it would actually just help your dodge and burn, you know, generally. So let's let's jump into this. Now I use curves adjustment layers and the way to create my dodge and burn layers by um, coming down here. Um, so you go to curves. So we're creating a dodge layer first. We'll change, let's change this to dodge. Change our blend mode from normal to screen. Now you can see how bright the image is. It's not blown out, but it has actually like popped the highlights like a lot. Now we're going to invert. To invert is control I on the PC and command I on the Mac. So we'll invert. Sorry. Make sure you're on your make sure you're on your um, mask when make sure your mask is clicked when you're inverting. So I'm going to invert that. Back to normal. Create a new curves layer. Now we're going to name this burn. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to go to our blend modes here and change it to multiply. You can see how dark our image is right now. Then we'll invert this layer too and put this in a group. Control G for PC, Command G for Mac. And we'll name this dodge and burn. So those are dodge and burn layers. Now, if you do not know dodge and burning, dodging and burning is um, essentially, um, how do I put it? <laughs> and, um, enhancing your highlights and your shadows so that your image can look way better. So I, I, I wish there's a better way to put it. So you dodge your shadows and you burn your highlights. Now, if in makeup terms, it's more like contouring and highlighting. So basically, it gives more shape to the face. If you dodge some certain parts and you burn some certain parts, it actually helps the image. Now, if you understand lighting, you need to know where the light is falling on your subject and that helps to shape your subject's face. So you know where to dodge and you know where to burn. So in situations like this, in this image, I'm just going to create a layer here and um, pick a brush with another color so I can show you guys something. You know, let's use red. In a situation like this, I know I have to dodge this part of the um, subject's face, then um, somewhere around here, somewhere around here, then somewhere around here. You know, please let's not forget the nose too. And uh, anywhere that I can see, you know, highlights on the subject's face, I'll dodge. Then where I can see shadows, we're just going to delete this layer, create a new one. You know, probably just pick and that color. Uh, and let's increase the hardness this time, reduce the brush size. <laughs> so yeah, I know I'm going to burn these areas, the side of the nose, um, her contours right here, that's her cheekbones. Then probably the side of her face. I'm going to go in burn the lips, um, somewhere around the eye shadows, um, her neck, her shoulders, you know, anywhere that I can see shadows then I'll burn those, I'll burn those areas. So um, basically you dodge your highlights and you burn your shadows and this will um, enhance your subject's face and this will uh, enhance the features of your subject's face and also make her stand out. The image tends to look sharper and it, look, it tends to look more detailed after dodging and burning. So let's get into how I dodge and burn. Like I said, I create curves adjustment layers, um, make sure my dodge is on screen, the blend mode, and my burn is on multiply. Then I'll pick a brush, reduce the hardness of my brush, um, size is relative to the area that I'm trying to dodge or burn. So let's start with dodging. Now I told you guys from the beginning that I'll show you how to create um, uh, a check layer that you can use to know 
where to essentially dodge well and burn well. So that way we create a black and white layer and drag our reds down. Once we do that, you can see the features of your subject's face a lot more. Now, another trick I like to use when I dodge and burn is to turn, on, turn off my frequency separation layer. That way, I can actually see my image. Um, I can see the contrast in my image because frequency separation tends to reduce how contrasty your image looks. And I can see exactly where you know my um, subject has um, a contour or probably some kind of shadow that the frequency separation is probably hiding a bit. So I know exactly where to dodge and burn. So my image looks almost exactly the same way it looked before frequency separation. Um, I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from. So this is just a neat trick to do you know, every once in a while while you're retouching. So let's leave this layer on for now. So we have our black and white layer. We've pulled down our blacks. And we can actually see a very contrasty image. We're not looking for any colors here. We're just dodging and burning. So yeah, I'm going to pick a white brush um, right here, down here. Pick a white brush. My opacity, I'll set my opacity to 12. And I'll set my flow to 12. So this works for me. 10 works, 15 works, whatever it is, just try it. I'll come to my dodge layer, make sure I'm on my layer mask, and I'll start dodging my image. So basically, I'm going to do my global dodge and burn first, you know, before I jump into um, dodging um, some smaller details. Now, let's dodge and burn the forehead. Do not zoom in too much while you're dodging and burning, right here. Okay, so this works for me. And I'll come down to the cheek somewhere around here. So as you can see, for now, I'm using big brushes. Then right here too. Okay, so this works for me. I'll get the nose. Now, if you're just learning dodge and burn, I would advise that you take your time to learn this. It's not, um, it's, it's, um, we're working with a non-destructive layer, but it tends to be very destructive if you overdo it. It will ruin your image. So I have an idea of what I'm doing. That's why I'm not toggling my black and white layer off too much. But if you're just starting, then I'll advise you to toggle on and off your black and white layer so you can see when you're actually overdoing things. So I'll turn that back on. Then right here on the chin. So now it depends on the look that you're going for. Um, so the um, look that you're going for will determine how much you're going to dodge and how much you're going to burn your image. So if you're going for a very subtle, soft look, then your dodge and burn um, will be very minimal. But if you're going for something that is um, really harsh and contrasty, you know, you probably have to dodge and burn a little more. But do not do, do not overdo dodging and burning. You have to find a sweet spot to it. So I'm just here, my global dodge and burn. Again, the right places around the face. Uh, I'll zoom in now to get some more detailed places. Like I said, the area of the the area that you're dodging or burning would actually um, determine how big or how small your brush is. So yeah, I'm just gonna work on this area right here. So I'm going to toggle on and off my. So essentially, now I can see that I need to get some just add that to this and this thing. Now my subject's looking really really bright. Probably just add a little here, just to, okay. There's somewhere around the shoulders here. Somewhere around here too, okay. I think we're doing pretty okay here. Like I said, now I zoom in again. And work on her lips now I'm not going to waste too much time doing this in um, when I'm working on my own images then I'll, I'll, I take my time you know, but for YouTube I do not want to spend too much time you know dodging and burning on YouTube so but if you're dodging and burning your image like I said you should take a lot more time than than I am doing right now so make sure you get in and get the details it, it goes a lot a long way to help your your images look look way better so, so let's see Let's just zoom in. Let's see our before and our after. You can see that it's looking really good. You know, we've added more um, lights to her her face, and yeah, looking pretty good to me though. Okay. So 
So look at before and look at after. We can tell we need to get some just to smoothen the gradation between highlights and shadows. Okay. This works for me. Um, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to take this to 20 and take this to 20 so I can get her lips. Um, this spaces around her lips because I want them to pop very well. I hope you guys are enjoying listening to my voice without any music. Um, like I said, people said it's distracting, so I'm just going to try this one without music. But if you're hearing music and you're hearing dance, then that means <laughs> I, I do not like what I'm hearing. But anyways, back to dodging and burning. Okay, I'm going to get, take this back to 12. Then my flan opacity back to 12 and 12. Make sure you get almost everywhere that you need to because you don't want one of your image, um, one part of your um, image looking really nice and sharp and crisp, then the other part looking dull. So, yeah. So, I'm going to turn this off. Then let's move to burn. Now, once you click this, <laughs> once you toggle on your black and white layer, you know exactly where you're going to be burning. So, now make sure you use um, small brushes and big brushes so you can get exactly. Um, the, the exact shape of the face. So somewhere around here, I know this place is darker than this, so I'm just going to use a small brush to bring the shape here out. Then I'll use a big brush to toggle this part too, just then right here too, same thing here. Then use a bigger brush to go over this place. Then somewhere around here, just use a big brush to go over that. Get her nose too, small brushes. Like I said, make sure you're not all the way zoomed in when you're working on your image. I do not like zooming in because I want to see um, what my image looks like when somebody is looking at my image because nobody's going to look at an image like this, obviously. So yeah, um, back to my brush tool. Okay, at this point now, I think we can zoom into this place. Always toggle your black and white layer off so you can see exactly what you're doing. Um, so you do not overdo it. Okay. So let's see where we are at now with this. Before and after. Before and after. Now this is a huge difference from where we started. And um, I'll take my time, I'll take a lot more time and um, really dodge and burn this image. I'll make sure I get the eyes, like um, the blacks around the eyes here, make them, make them a lot darker. Yeah. Work on my lashes, bring them out a lot more. Yeah, so the lips too. I work on my lips. You can see this line underneath this right here. Make sure my image is popping all around and not just one part of my image. The ears too. I'll make sure I'm getting the ears. I'll make sure I get every part of my image so one part does not look better than the other one. So every everything looks really good and balanced. Trust me, it's not easy to talk and retouch. <laughs> so yeah, um, let's look at this for our global dodge and burn. What do you guys think? This is our before and this is our after. So let's look at where our image started from, from our frequency separation down to dodge and burn now, or no, from the part one, which is, um, or which was, working with your image in Capture One, processing your raw files. So this is where we started. This is our image and where we started. Then frequency separation and now dodge and burn. Uh, well, it's safe to say that we have actually made progress on this image. So yeah, um, thank you for watching today's video. And like I said, make sure you practice your dodging and burning a lot more than I showed you today. You know, take your time when you're dodging and burning and you definitely get better at it and probably even get way better results than what I got here today. So yeah, thank you for watching today's video. If you liked this video, please smash that like button and give me a thumbs up. 
If you enjoyed today's video and you are looking to see more, do not forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification button. If this helped you in any way and um, you like this um, type or this style of dodging and burning or probably you have your own style that works for you, please comment below, let me know and I'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to be moving into um, working with skin tones and sharpening your images. I'll probably try and you know put all that into one video so that we end this in part 4 if it's possible.